Long, long time ago, in a galaxy far away. Welcome back everyone to Cat Reacts, a series where I, Cat McBerry, live react to the latest trailers to drop on Disney Plus and YouTube. And today's episode is for once not a teaser trailer, it's actually a full official trailer. I did see the teaser trailer for Obi-Wan back when it first premiered and obviously didn't think much of it, I mean it was just a screenshot of him in the desert, I mean we've seen that before. But now we have the first real official trailer drop thanks to uh, Disney Plus Day. This was the only trailer aside from all the Marvel stuff that I was looking forward to seeing. I gotta admit, I wasn't completely sold on Obi-Wan as a series considering, you know, we saw him in the prequel series, we saw him in Clone Wars, and I was wondering just how much more they can really do with this character before he appears in A New Hope. I mean, this whole thing's gonna be spent on Tatooine, so really, how much more can you do with it aside from, you know, him facing sand people and possibly gang members and so on and so forth. I mean, it's not not like it's stuff we haven't seen before. That being said, I will say I do really like Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan. I feel he was one of the best things about the prequels. And obviously I'm not the only one who thinks that. I mean, the guy is a great actor. And I've seen him in other stuff too, and he's equally if not better in those as well. So yeah, not 100% sure what to expect with this. I did hear that uh, Hayden Christensen is supposed to come back as Vader, which kind of confuses me a bit. I mean, it's implied that the two hadn't seen each other between their fight on Mustafar and their last fight on the Death Star before Obi-Wan dies. So I'm wondering what the hell's gonna happen here exactly. I imagine it wouldn't make much sense if he realized that Obi-Wan was still alive on Tatooine because otherwise he probably would have hunted him there and thus found Luke a lot sooner. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what direction this goes in exactly. But I guess we'll save further speculation once I watch the trailer. So without further ado, let's watch us some Obi-Wan and play. <laughs> 69. Nice. There's a hunger for this character to come back. Was there? So really? Somebody out there says you were hungry for the return. Of Ewan McGregor as Obi Wan Kenobi. The most beautiful thing of all is that it's brought me back together with Hayden. Hmm. We're bringing back Hayden Christensen to reprise the role of Darth Vader. We couldn't tell the story of Obi Wan. I don't Kenobi see why, but whatever. Anakin or Vader. I mean, he's pretty much James Earl Jones at this point. Does, do they really need the actor? That you enjoy it as much as we enjoy making it. So we're gonna get an actual Obi-Wan Vader fight, like, before the Death Star? Yeah, I have several questions about this. Like, I know it's become expected at this point for Star Wars to basically fuck its own continuity for the sake of trying to make things make sense after George Lucas messed up so much with the prequels. But I sincerely question how they're supposed to pull this off exactly. So like, I get it. Obi-Wan's whole purpose is to protect Luke until the time is right for him to finally learn about his lineage finally take up the mental training to be a Jedi, and finally face on the Empire like he was supposedly supposed to do. I know, that one confused me as well, because they always built up Anakin to be the chosen one. And when it was clear that he wasn't the chosen one, or at least he was the chosen one in the sense that they weren't expecting, suddenly all that falls to Luke. And I never quite understood that, because it's like, Luke and Leia were born at the same time. They're twins. And yeah, I get why they split them up to make it easier to hide them, even though Annie never knew that he and Patty were expecting twins, so I don't see what the difference is with that. I guess it was probably a safety measure, although I always thought it, thought it a bit unfair that Leia ends up going to a diplomat and a queen well, as Luke gets sent to a bunch of farmers on a shithole planet. Like, that felt unfair to me. But then I guess they counterbalance with the fact that Luke is apparently the chosen one to take up Anakin's mantle and become the new prophesized Jedi. But again, it never made sense because they never mentioned Luke with that. And I even see them reference it in, like, Rebels about how, you know, he's the chosen one and apparently he's the one that Maul got that vision about that was supposed to, like, save everyone. And, Again, it doesn't make sense to me, because it's like, why would you put the focus on Anakin and then shift it to Luke just by virtue of the fact that they're related? 
And yeah, I get it. Luke is a powerful Jedi, and you see all the stuff he does. He ends up ultimately saving the galaxy. So in a sense, they were correct about that. But I don't know. It just always felt like he unfairly got a lot of focus. Because, I mean, yes, Leia didn't really portray any Force powers, but she has them. She does train as a Jedi later. We saw she has her own power. So what made Luke more special than her? I mean, you could argue she did more to help the war overall, given she was involved from the beginning in her teenage years, like, before Luke found out about everything. She didn't even need the revelation of her family to actually get involved and get stuff done. But yeah, getting back to the whole premise with Obi-Wan, so, yeah, I don't understand why they had to get Hayden Christian back, like, Maybe if it involves, like, flashbacks, like, memories and stuff of their adventures that we never got to see, whether they were ones that are similar to the ones in Clone Wars or something completely different. But even so, like, if he's just there to be the guy in the suit, like, really? Did they need to bring him back for that? I mean, is he actually gonna speak in his normal voice? I don't expect him to. Many people hated it when he talked. And I mean, by that point, he's basically J James Earl Jones. So you can just get whatever schmo to be in the costume and just have the guy dub him over. So again, I don't see the purpose in bringing him back, except if it's, you know, flashbacks. And yeah, like I get at this point he's in hiding because now the Empire is established, establishing itself. They're probably going after all the remaining Jedi. I imagine they probably would have tracked Obi-Wan down to somewhere, but if they track him down to Tatooine, I mean, it's going to take a huge leap in logic, a huge thing, just to get him to not go back to that place so that it makes sense for later on when, you know, he's still there and Luke is still undiscovered. But I mean, we'll see. I'm sure they got better writers this time around that will try to make this make sense. And again, I'm not dissing the fact that they're focusing on Obi-Wan. I'm not dissing his actor. I'm not dissing his character. I mean, they're both perfectly fine. It's just, out of everything in Star Wars that I've been seeing lately, the different things they've been focusing on, it just seems weird to, again, focus on Obi-Wan. Because you can argue he's gotten equally as much focus as Anakin has at this point. I mean, we saw him from the beginning in the prequels. We saw him... Throughout Clone Wars, we saw him up until the original trilogy when he dies. And I mean, I didn't really think there was that much more to discover about his character. Like, maybe some of his past, perhaps? Because aside from knowing that he once tried to be in a relationship with Satine, but it didn't work out for obvious reasons, they don't really elaborate too much more. Like, we don't know what his home planet is. We don't know if he had a family. We don't know how he was growing up in the Jedi Order, if he had a rebellious streak about him, you know, when he first teamed up with Quagon. Like, in that sense, maybe that's what they're going to focus on in between all of the Jedi hunting and stuff. I don't know, I just hope that they don't friggin' uproot the continuity again, because... Lord knows we've been having a lot of that done lately, you know, in terms of what the uh, Mandalorian has been dishing out for us, in terms of what Boba Fett's gonna dish out for us. But again, it all is yet to be seen. Same thing with Bad Batch too. It's all the stuff they're bringing to the table, all the few things that they change in their continuity. It's really not easy to predict what we're gonna see in this. But hey, let me know what you think. If you're looking forward to Obi-Wan, if you're not, uh, what you think about Hayden Christensen coming back. Leave a comment below and a like, hit the bell for notifications. But until next time, I'm Kat McBerry, and that's no moon, it's another prequel. God help us all. Am I, am I the